Hello everyone. Welcome back to Sustainable Living with Shilpa Reddy, powered by Planet Greens Farm Natura, a new beginning to your life. Sustenance of women's health is extremely important for the family, for the community and for the nation. Breast cancer is rising concern among women of all age groups and is getting more common among the young in our country. Don't we all know at least one person who's been affected by cancer? October is the month of breast cancer awareness and today's special episode on sustainable living with Shilpa Reddy is to create awareness and bust all the myths to sustain breast health. I am honored to have one of the youngest doctors to have received the Padma Shri Award. He is the founder and director of Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation, Kims Hyderabad. Dr. P. Raghuram Garu, who is on my show today. Thank you for coming on my show, Raghu Garu. Thank you, Andy. Thanks um, for inviting me. Pleasure is mine. I've known you for so many years and you've relocated, I think, 15 years it's been. Yes. And my first question is, have you seen any kind of attitudinal change when it comes to breast cancer in our country? Yes, uh, indeed. I think uh, it's exactly 15 years. October 2007, okay. I relocated to India and it's been precisely 15 years. And we launched the Pink Ribbon campaign in 2007, mm -hmm. October. Uh, my mother had breast cancer, so that's what brought me back to India. Right. And we launched uh, this Pink Ribbon campaign through the Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation. Mm -hmm. And over the past 15 years, we've been working relentlessly uh, to create the importance of early detection through mm -hmm. a number of initiatives. Because in our country, breast cancer is a taboo. It's a closet issue. It's an issue that is even hushed still? up. Even, yeah, even still, even in urban India. Okay. So, in many parts of particularly rural India, where 70% of our population reside, hmm. it's certainly a taboo. Okay. In urban India, particularly in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, we've been able to break that taboo hmm. and create that much needed awareness that right. people should talk about it. We have made it a much commonly discussed issue. Previously, Correct. it was all hushed up. Absolutely. So, what's hmm. very gratifying is uh, that, you know, I've been seeing... Uh, several individuals, mm -hmm. organizations, institutions, hospitals taking inspiration from this Pink Ribbon campaign mm -hmm. and conducting a number of initiatives. For example, a walk mm -hmm. for an illness was unheard of Correct. in the past. Now, oh. almost every other week, mm -hmm. we find that people are doing something for various ailments, not just breast cancer. That's true. So, I think it is really gratifying that the Pink Ribbon campaign has enthused and inspired mm. people to take up similar campaigns, right. which I'm sure will go a long way in, uh, you know, touching many lives yes. and saving many lives. So, now let's talk about uh, the basic questions that everybody has about breast cancer, Raghugaru. So, what causes breast cancer is my first question and why is it on a rise? You know, initially, I would see people above 35 getting it. But now I see a lot of, I, at least I hear, a lot of younger people also affected by breast cancer. Why is it on a rise and what causes it? So, any factor that increases the exposure of the hormone estrogen for mm. a prolonged period of time on the breast can potentially cause breast cancer. Okay. So, there are several uh, risk factors, mm. for example, early menarche, late menopause, okay. not having children okay. and having the first child after 30, not breastfeeding, sedentary mm. lifestyle, obesity, particularly after menopause okay. uh, and uh, excessive alcohol consumption, smoking. So, these are, there are several, uh, you know, uh, factors that cause uh, the increased exposure of the hormone estrogen. Hmm. In addition to this, family history, okay. not just my mother having breast cancer and my children uh, are at an increased risk. That's not true. Hmm. So, significant family history, we call it strong family history. That is, in the immediate family, if someone's mother, sister, grandmother has hmm. been diagnosed with breast cancer under the age of 40, okay. or there are two or more breast cancers diagnosed in the immediate family, Okay. Or there is a history of breast cancer and ovarian cancer in the immediate family or mm. male breast cancer in the immediate family. Such people are at an increased risk of developing breast cancer through an abnormality of uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Mm. 
and mm. uh, it's not necessary that whatever i have just mentioned uh, you know these risk factors definitely mm. mean that they have an abnormal gene but when such a strong family history is there that accounts to about 5 to 10% of breast cancers okay so these are the few risk factors that can potentially cause breast cancer but i must say that breast cancer um, is a tsunami mm. world over since the year 2020 okay. it has even overtaken lung cancer oh are to, you serious yeah to become the commonest cancer affecting uh, you know women Uh, okay. so this is the commonest cancer if you take all cancers combined breast cancer has overtaken all the cancers really? and in india okay it is the commonest cancer it has overtaken cervical cancer uh, it is the commonest cancer we see about uh, on an average 200000 new cases of breast cancer every year every 4 minutes hmm. someone somewhere in the country is diagnosed with breast cancer well this these statistics are quite alarming it is alarming and this is only the tip of the iceberg because we don't have a robust cancer registry where all the cancers get registered mm. so this is just the tip of the iceberg and okay. uh, every 8 minutes uh, someone somewhere dies of breast cancer nearly oh. 90000 women succumb to breast cancer in our country and for every two women diagnosed with breast cancer one woman dies of it that is because of lack of awareness Oh and absence God. of screening mm. program because of which more than 60% of breast cancers present in the advanced stages so there is so much of work to be done right. in terms of advocacy in terms of early detection and our country uh, in india compared mm. to the west where we see a lot of breast cancers after the age of 50 in india the peak incidence of breast cancer is from 40 to 50 mm. and the reason is uh, you know we, we are a young nation Yes. About eighty-seven percent of our population is under the age of fifty years. Correct. So only thirteen percent of our population is over fifty years. Mm. So therefore, since we are a young nation, uh, we have a lot of young people, and therefore that's probably why we are seeing a lot of breast cancers in young women. Okay. And uh, uh, the challenges faced uh, by young women with breast cancer is significantly different from those faced by older women. Can you state a few? well uh, first of all it's an agonizing experience for someone mm. who is young who would never ever imagine that they would get breast cancer at that age right. when they are diagnosed with breast cancer they are in a state of shock correct so mm. uh, that is the first thing and, and that is one of the reasons why there is a delay in diagnosis they do notice a lump but they would think i'm young mm. there's no way it will be a cancer so okay. they ignore that lump for some time Uh, by which time it would be advanced Correct. so therefore you know the the because they are young and they don't expect that they would be mm. getting breast cancer when they delay the diagnosis that is the first challenge okay the second challenge is in young women uh, breast imaging that is mammography is quite difficult to interpret okay. the reason is a cancer appears white the breast tissue in young women there's a lot of dense breast tissue so essentially mm. breast has got fat and breast tissue the okay. breast tissue on a mammogram appears whitish and the oh. cancer also appears whitish so as women age over the age of 50 years after menopause this breast tissue content comes down this whitish content which okay. we see on mammogram mm. and the dark content which is the fat content increases so therefore it's easier to pick up breast cancer in older women okay so when someone is young there is a challenge to pick up breast cancer on mammography so there are issues relating to diagnosis and the third is which is very important managing breast cancer in the young is not easy uh, because sometimes the treatments don't work really many times they recur and the prognosis is poorer in younger women Is it also true that it also advances very fast? Yes, so it rapidly progresses mm. because the presentation also is late because of the reasons I've just mm. mentioned. So women ignore okay. symptoms, so they present late as well. In addition to this, they have got huge challenges mm. because they are young. They would have a young family. There are fertility issues. So uh, you know, and then many of them will need chemotherapy where, where there is hair loss, which causes uh, again a lot of agony. so therefore managing a young patient 
um, you know, would be very difficult is just an understatement, you know, because it is a huge challenge. Challenge. What are the symptoms uh, and what are the first things a woman would detect if she's suspecting breast cancer? Yeah. So the first and foremost thing is uh, there's a fine line between advocacy and scaring people. So we are mm. here to create that awareness. Yes. So majority of women who have any breast health issue, they are benign. They are not cancerous. Okay. Great. But when someone notices a painless lump in the breast, mm. recent indrawing of the nipple or blood stain discharged from the nipple or recent excoriation of the skin uh, around the nipple areola region or dimpling of the skin overlying the breast, they shouldn't ignore. They so, must those are the initial things that you notice? They are not the initial. Uh, well, these are symptoms. Oh, you symptoms. know, when they notice these symptoms, because women must be encouraged to look and feel, feel. how their breasts feel mm. uh, throughout the month. It's not uh, just at one particular time as is advocated through breast self-examination. So okay. if there are any new changes like a painless lump or recent excoriation around the nipple areola region or indrawing of the nipple or blood stain discharged from the nipple, they shouldn't ignore. They must okay. report to a doctor. So that is uh, very, very important for women to be aware of any new changes. A mm. young woman or an older woman, any new changes must not be ignored. Okay. What is triple assessment? Right. When a lady notices any new change in the breast, they must go to a doctor, a okay. specialist, who must do what's called triple assessment. Triple assessment is, first of all, talking to the patient, making the patient comfortable, mm. taking a history and examination. That's the first component. Okay. The second component is breast imaging, which is a combination of mammography mm. and ultrasound scan. Mammography is an X-ray of the breast. Right. And third component, if there is a lump in the breast, it needs to be biopsied. Okay. And there are two ways of doing a biopsy. One is a fine needle aspiration biopsy, which is called FNAC, which is largely given up because it is inaccurate and it leads to false positive diagnosis. Okay. So the gold standard is under ultrasound guidance, a core needle biopsy, that is a tissue biopsy is done, mm. which accurately helps to distinguish whether the lesion is benign, that is non-cancerous or cancerous. So, this so by way of triple assessment, mm. We are able to definitely tell without the lady going under the knife okay. that this lesion is a cancer or not. And we are able to reassure the vast majority so of people. So that's like completely foolproof kind a of absolutely. assessment. Okay. Of course, there are exceptions. Sometimes even with triple assessment, we can't make a diagnosis. Really? When no. we may have to take the patient to theater and do an excision biopsy. But by and large, mm. if someone is uh, asked to go straight to theater to get a diagnosis, mm. they are in the wrong place. Correct. So triple assessment is now the gold standard. Okay. Yeah. What role does counseling play in uh, you know managing patients when they find out that they are affected with cancer? So counseling is absolutely important. It's paramount. In my opinion, it's more than 50% of the treatment. Okay. Because once someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, Hmm. It's just like a veil. Whatever the doctor is saying, the patient and the relatives are in a state of shock. They're not able to absorb. Correct. So it's important to patiently explain, not just once, but many times, hmm. uh, in a simple, easy to understand format, okay. not using complicated jargon, hmm. and, uh, you know, with empathy. Hmm. And it's very important to give that much needed inner strength mm. to that lady because cancer doesn't just affect the body. It affects the body, mind and soul. Correct. So just treating the body will not will not help treating the cancer because True. I've seen a lot of women mm. who um, are in a state of depression mm. and whatever treatment is given, even if it's an early cancer, it doesn't work. Whereas women, even when they have a reasonably, uh, you know, locally advanced breast cancer, but they're very strong and they get that inner strength and they have the courage to fight, they really actually come out of cancer. Right. So counseling is the most important and the first component mm. before any treatment is given. And this and is done by the doctor himself. It should be done by the doctor. Mm. And in fact, uh, in India, counseling was introduced into the medical curriculum just a few years ago. Oh, really? Uh, you know, so <laughs> counseling is not given that much importance. Mm. But uh, uh, I take it upon myself that 
when a patient comes mm. without counseling we have a dedicated counseling room as well without counseling you know patients should not be taken up for treatment that is the most important component of care and okay. it not only prepares the patient's mind it also helps answers a lot of doubts Correct. in addition to giving that much needed strength yes and courage to fight uh, breast cancer okay so about mammogram most of the women don't go because someone somewhere must have told them that it hurts does it hurt and does it have any radiation uh, hazards and how often should a woman go for mammogram and from which age so very very pertinent question shilpa garu so basically mammography is an x ray of the breast mm -hmm. and mammography causing lot of people as you rightly said hesitate to go for screening mammogram because they think it's radiation hazard mm -hmm. second is it's painful right. so first of all radiation hazard it's not a radiation hazard because mm -hmm. the radiation from a mammography is equivalent to a dental x ray Okay. so it's very very tiny very radiation minimal. so mm. therefore in this day and age of digital mammogram and 3d mammography the radiation is even less okay. so women don't need to worry about the radiation hazard okay so women 40 and over from the age of 40 must mm. get an annual screening mammogram okay and the question about pain yes there's momentary discomfort because the breasts are compressed but if the radiographer is trained well radiographer is not a radiologist radiographer is the one who does the mammography mm. so many a times women directly report to the mammography unit mm. before they consult a doctor okay so therefore we train our radiographers to comfort the patient right so patients come very anxious thinking they have cancer mm. so it's very important to comfort the patient calm and them down calm first. them down before they do the test mm. and even in doing the test there are certain techniques that mm. one can employ to minimize the discomfort right so if the radiographer is well trained and also trained in counseling patients and in comforting patients certainly it won't be painful yeah. except for a momentary discomfort right i can say that because i get it done every year and then there's barely any discomfort so yes. if that helps people to hear it from my side Absolutely. i would say the same thing ragugaru is it true that men can also get breast cancer yes it is uh, true 1% of breast cancers occur in men so if 100 oh. people are diagnosed with breast cancer 99 will be in women and one will be in men because men also have breast issue okay. it's not uncommon mm. it is rare but even men if they notice any new changes mm. as we just uh, discussed they must go to a specialist but not notice. to be too alarmed mm. but uh, you know any new just changes just to be cautious absolutely. and see if there's any changes that absolutely. happening and okay. and because men have got less breast tissue mm. and if it is ignored it can you know spread faster oh, and present okay. in a advanced stage so therefore they must be also vigilant because wow, we do see in india we don't have precise statistics but mm. overall world over it is about 1% okay and is it also true that women who use uh, contraceptive pills for a long time do they also have a risk of uh, getting uh, breast cancer uh, the answer is no modern day birth control pills mm. don't have high dose estrogen okay. so they don't predispose to breast cancer but hormone replacement therapy if it's given over a prolonged period of time mm. with high doses of estrogen for over 10 years that can predispose to breast and cancer and who are the people who are given this uh, therapy so people who who require hormone replacement therapy okay. the gynecologist will take a call mm -hmm. but they must be cautious as to when they, when they prescribe the hormone replacement therapy okay uh, it must be in such a way that they don't use it for a prolonged period of time and it doesn't contain high doses of estrogen so ragugaru uh, most of the women fear that if you uh, you know get breast cancer your breast have to be removed like mastectomy is what they say so but is there anything that you know in today's day and age wherein they can preserve their breast indeed um, you know a lot of women uh, mm. you know in india particularly in india the mastectomy rate for breast cancer is phenomenally high mm. more than 80% really whereas in the west it's the reverse um, mm. so i think it's very important to understand that whilst a few women with breast cancer will need mastectomy mm. uh, for various reasons okay but a substantial number of women 
mm. can also undergo breast conserving surgery in this day and age mm. cancer treatment is multi modality treatment you okay. have surgery you have chemotherapy you have radiotherapy you have hormone therapy and you've got targeted therapy now when the cancer is large when we call it locally advanced breast cancer mm. in this day and age with the help of modern day chemotherapy regimens mm -hmm. we're able to downsize the tumor that okay. is we we can reduce a tumor which is even 5 cm to 2 cm or okay. even less okay so we give it up front before mm. doing the surgery we are able to give the chemotherapy downsize the cancer okay. and then offer such women also breast conserving surgery so that okay. means it's not just for early breast cancers that we can do breast conserving surgery we can also do breast conserving surgery for those who present with locally advanced breast cancer after giving what is called neo adjuvant chemotherapy okay and when someone's so lump this uh, therapy you first reduce the size of the tumor so yes. it's easy to preserve it is easier to preserve and okay. remove less tissue Okay. So if it was a big tumor you got to remove a big Bigger chunk of, of the, tissue when you okay. big, remove a mm. big chunk of tissue there's going to be a big defect mm. in the breast okay. so whatever lump is removed there is bound to be some kind of cosmetic deformity correct so in this day and age over the past 20 years there have been refinements in surgical care mm. and there is a concept what is called oncoplastic surgery okay. where the surgeon combines oncological principles with plastic surgical principles Mm. to remove the area that is the breast mm. lesion and a normal tissue around it and when a defect forms that defect can be covered by reshaping the breast okay through various techniques okay so for example if there is a lump in the upper inner quadrant of the breast mm. that is the bra line any incision that is made there will be cosmetically not acceptable and also because there is less breast tissue there okay. there is bound to be a defect now there are various techniques which can be employed to fill that defect okay. and place the scar in such a way that it is cosmetically feasible and acceptable okay so these techniques uh, i'm i'm not talking about breast reconstruction after mm. mastectomy because that's a different thing yes. so when women have mastectomy their breast mound can be recreated through reconstruction okay. i'm talking about reshaping the breast after removing the lump got it which mm. should be offered to women mm. uh, because you know just removing the lump and leaving a big defect is not doing any good to that lady yes. because you're going to leave a big cosmetic defect which is going to see day in and day out mm. so there are a lot of refinements in breast cancer surgery and more and more women are now suitable for undergoing breast conserving surgery So have you noticed any significant change among women who have gotten this uh, oncoplasty and also you know uh, getting the getting their breast conserved and preserved Yes uh, many of uh, patients who come to me uh, who have been told that they would need a mastectomy when after counseling you know it's all giving options mm. basically it's very important uh, not to be uh um, dogmatic and mm. dictatorial correct uh, as a doctor it's very important to give the patient the choices choice. if there are sometimes there may not be a choice mm. as i mentioned to you sometimes there may not be a choice to have breast yes. conserving versus mastectomy but when there is a possibility if if one is able to counsel the patient mm. uh, then the patient will absorb whatever has been said and will be able to discuss with uh, her spouse mm. and they will have questions and those Correct. questions must be answered patiently mm. and uh, many a times i have found when these options are given mm. many choose to have breast conserving surgery and what i tend to do is i also put them in touch with other patients who have had breast conserving surgery so once they speak to them they get a lot of confidence yes. so it's all in preparing the mind uh to direct and the patient and share the knowledge yes so that they can take an informed decision Absolutely. rather than saying this or that okay so ragugar with all your experience what are the two to three most important things that you would want to share with women um you know uh, about 30 and to be cautious about breast cancer right uh, it's a very good question shilpa garu so i think uh, what i'd like to say is uh, this is international breast cancer awareness month Mm. I think uh, this is a month to create awareness. Yes. And that's why we are here. Very grateful to you. Um, uh, pleasure is mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I think women first and foremost mm. is women of all ages mm. must be breast aware. 
that is if they notice any new changes mm -hmm. as we've just highlighted they must not ignore they must okay. report to a specialist women of all ages because mm -hmm. uh, as we again discussed breast cancer uh, can occur in younger women as well in in, in india yes uh, so therefore women of all ages must be breast aware that's the first point second is women 40 and over must get themselves an annual screening mammogram mm. so we are in a month of festivals we just celebrated deepavali and we had dashara so i think when we have festivals it's a practice to buy sarees and various other things mm. i think for the men watching this program mm. i think it's a message to them that for the women in their lives uh, mm. whether it's their spouse their mother their grandmother please gift Uh, a annual mammogram, mam a mammogram, mammogram on an annual basis, and October is the best month to do that because mm -hmm. there is a buzz around across the world. Correct. Uh, October is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month throughout the world, and I think that's the best month to gift a mammogram because many lives can be saved, saved. with that. Absolutely. And so I think that's the real message that I'd like to give. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to stating that once again that. most breast health issues are mm. benign not okay. to panic to report to the specialist and i'm sure you know majority will have their good health and uh, any uh, health uh, care advice yeah. or the lifestyle advice that, would, that you would like to give yeah i think the third point which i'd like to say is breast cancer is preventable in certain way mm. it's not entirely preventable yes. but i think physical exercise uh, it's very important you are a fitness enthusiast so I don't need to be saying that to mm. you but I think the message is physical exercise not having sedentary you must get out of the sedentary uh, habits good. and you must be moving at least 30 minutes of exercise mm. active exercise every day uh, try to avoid being obese mm. because after menopause particularly the fat cells produce estrogen and that mm. can potentially cause breast cancer okay so avoiding obesity avoiding sedentary habits and eating the right food healthy diet is Home very important food is what i tell people absolutely and and also avoiding excess intake of alcohol yes. and smoking now smoking also is now a risk factor for breast cancer so we see a lot of young women smoking quite a lot so i think mm. it's very important that uh, with these lifestyle changes they will be able to minimize the risk of getting breast cancer so raghugaru if someone is detected with breast cancer and treated do they have a higher risk of getting it again well uh, it's unpredictable uh, mm. one of as we have discussed about the various risk factors one of the risk factor is mm. uh, if someone has had previous surgery okay. to the breast uh, whether it could be a wide local excision that is breast conserving surgery or a mastectomy mm. they have a higher chance of getting another breast cancer it could be a new breast cancer in another breast okay. or it could be a recurrence but with modern day treatments and if cancer is detected early we hope that women do not get recurrence yes. Uh, but yes recurrence the, the, it is a risk is a factor it is a risk factor and one more question uh, do we need to remove all the lymph nodes uh, when detected by breast cancer uh, the answer is no just okay. as in breast surgery as i have explained that uh, increasingly more and more women hmm. are being suitable for breast conserving surgery and oncoplastic breast surgery mm. rather than having a mastectomy similarly in the axilla because axilla is the armpit okay when someone gets breast cancer the first port of call for a cancer to go would be to the lymph nodes in the armpit okay so traditionally at the same time as breast surgery that is whether it was a mastectomy or a mm. breast conserving surgery the traditional practice has been to remove all the lymph nodes Okay. that's called axillary node clearance okay but with that there are a lot of issues women mm -hmm. get altered sensation in the inner aspect of the arm some people get shoulder stiffness some people get about 5 to 10% swelling of the arm which is called lymphedema which can be lifelong oh my god so mm. to avoid all these things in the recent 20 years mm. there have been developments in refining the surgery to the armpit Okay. and what is called sentinel node biopsy sentinel node uh, is the first few lymph nodes that the cancer could potentially spread to okay so when someone is having surgery that is before surgery what we do is we do an ultrasound scan as part of triple assessment mm. 
and if we find that there are no abnormal lymph nodes in the armpit okay. those women would, would be suitable for having sentinel node biopsy and at the same time as doing surgery to the breast we inject a dye near the nipple which travels to the armpit and we remove a few lymph nodes from the armpit and send it to the pathologist for examination whilst uh, the lady is under the anesthesia. Oh, so that okay. is called frozen section okay. where the pathologist will cut open a lymph node and see whether there is any cancer in mm -hmm. that lymph node. If there is cancer cells in the lymph nodes, then we remove the lymph nodes okay. uh, through the traditional axillary clearance. But if there isn't any cancer in the sentinel nodes, Mm. then we don't do anything further. So that way we are, you know, preserving the function of the upper limb. Okay. We are avoiding altered sensation, shoulder stiffness, and most importantly, the most difficult lymph edema as well. Okay. So, so this the, is the latest uh, technical This is not the latest, but this has been on for several years now. Okay. So just as oncoplastic breast surgery has evolved over the mm -hmm. last 20 years, Sentinel node biopsy has also, also been a routine practice now for the last couple of decades. Okay. So, Raghugaru, you have extensively worked with the government of Andhra Pradesh and government of Telangana and conducted breast screening on a large scale. Can you talk about it? Surely, Shilpagaru. So, basically, the best way to pick up breast cancer early mm. is by way of mammography. It has okay. been proven beyond doubt through several randomized controlled trials mm. spread across several decades that if one has to make a difference and one has to cure breast cancer, mm. um, we have to pick it up in the early impalpable stage, which can be done by way of mammography, which is an x-ray of the breast, which is done annually from the age of 40. That is the recommendation worldwide. Okay. But in a country like India, where 70% live in rural parts of the mm. country, where they cannot afford to have a mammogram, where there are no facilities to mm. have get a mammogram done, we need to find Indian solutions. Correct. So in that uh, context, the foundation partnered with the governments of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh and we trained healthcare workers who are employed with the government mm. to perform clinical breast examination, which is called CBE, okay. which is a way of detecting lumps if they are present in the breast, a professional trained way of picking up lumps. Okay. So with a mammogram, you can pick up a lesion as small as five millimeters. Okay. But if a healthcare worker is able to examine the breast and uh, examine it diligently, she can pick up a lump as small as two centimeters. Okay. Although two centimeters is not as small as 0.5 centimeters, mm. it's the second best way of picking up cancers early because in our country, because of lack of awareness, absence mm. of a screening program, more than 60% present in the advanced stages okay. where very few people survive beyond a year or two. That's right. So to find an Indian solution uh, to an Indian problem, which is a big problem because breast cancer is the commonest cancer affecting women in our country. Mm -hmm. So we trained healthcare workers employed with the governments of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh to perform clinical breast examination. That's brilliant. And um, over a four year period between 2012 to 2016, mm. we trained over 4,000 healthcare workers. Across, and both, across the both the states. Mm. And these healthcare workers in turn trained, you know, other healthcare workers. Okay, so the these were the effect. trainers. Mm. And then they implemented under the auspices of the foundation, uh, you know, the screening program, clinical mm. breast examination based mm. screening program to women beyond the ages of 35, 35 to 60 to be precise, in 4,000 villages. Okay. Uh, spread across, uh, you know, uh, both the states and uh, about more than 200,000 underprivileged women Wonderful. underwent screening through this initiative. Those who are found to have cancers were referred to the Arugisri centers in the neighboring areas and they were treated free of cost. That's so brilliant. this program actually mm. became uh, really impactful, so mm. impactful that uh, I had written to the Prime Minister after this uh, successful implementation of this program okay. and I was incorporated into the technical advisory group constituted mm. uh, um, uh, by the under the auspices of the Ministry of uh, Union Ministry of Health. Okay. And I'm very pleased to say that clinical breast examination based screening program is now part and parcel of the national screening program alongside oral cancer and cervical cancer, which is okay. being implemented through the National Health Mission. 
Wow. So it's a very is, gratifying. Uh, it is gratifying and it's a proud moment for all of us also. Thank you. Thank you so much for your precious time and shedding so much light on uh, creating uh, awareness about breast cancer. Thank you so much for being on my show. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and uh, it's a privilege to be on your show and through your show to empower people about various breast health issues. Thank you. I hope this special episode has been an enlightening one. Please share this episode with all the women in your life as early detection is the most effective in case of breast cancer. See you all next week. Stay tuned for more such episodes. Signing off, Shilpa Reddy.